Going back to just calling functions in Racket, um, you might have wondered again why I said the syntax was open paren identifier like exPT or substring, followed by expressions when all I had were simple values. Okay, um, and I'm going to come back and uh, define these terms, expression and value, better. Um, but here's what I would want to get at is, yeah, how would I go ahead and we've seen 2 plus 3? How would I say 2 plus 3 times 5? Okay, so in Racket, or sorry, in Java, you'd say something like 2 plus 3 times 5, and you wouldn't put any spaces in there because you're in Java and you don't have to, so. Um, okay, well, how would we go ahead and write this? Well, we're going to say open paren. By the way, what is 2 plus 3 times 5? He evaluates to, oh, my dear Aunt Sally and Penbass or something like that. Uh, there's an order of operations here. I do the multiplication first, then I add. I'm supposed to get 17 out of this. So really, I'm adding 2 to something else, right? How do I add 2 to something else? Well, I've already seen how to do that. It's open paren plus 2 and then something else. Close paren. What is that something else? 3 times 5. How do I write 3 times 5 in Racket? Uh, easy peasy. Uh, I haven't told you what the name of the multiplication function is, but it's the same as it is in Java. It's that little star, that little asterisk. So open paren asterisk 3, 5. I'm replacing that dot 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 with this orange box here, and that's getting, that should give us 17. Okay, by the way, uh, what about if I want to do the addition first and then multiply by 5. So in Racket, I, I would say something like 2 plus 3 times 5. How would I do that? Well, okay, I want to, do, to take something times 5. I know how to take something times 5 in Racket. I say open paren, star, something, and 5. Okay, go back to this dot, 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 and say, oh, what is that something times? I'm going to multiply by 5. Uh, the sum of 2 and 3. So open paren plus... Two, three, and now we get 25. So here's the question, what happened to the order of operations? Let me think about that, try to answer it. Pause, try to answer. It turns out in this prefix syntax, uh, or rather, it's not the prefix, it's actually the fact that the um, syntax for a function call requires parentheses. Yeah, that makes it so that there is never an ambiguous phrase. Uh, if you look at a racket, expre racket expression, it's always clear what's supposed to happen first. Uh, the, the parentheses for function call sort of uh, enforce a certain structure of the program. Um, whereas in Java, it was a little bit more convenient that we didn't need to type in the parentheses. I could just say 2 plus 3 star 5, but I had to learn all this about the order of operations. Okay, and again, uh, you, you had to learn it in elementary school, probably in your first week of a Java class, you had a bunch of exercises about order of operations in Java, and you probably have gotten tripped up by it at, at certain points, even though it's kind of the same. And then as you do more and more Java, and you find out, and you learn C and so on, you find out these languages actually have something like 13 levels of precedence and 35 operators. Um, Plus and times are not that bad, but when you start adding in all the other things that are operators, Google list of all operators in Java and precedents, yeah, there's a big table that nobody memorizes, and PEMDAS would be a long word that's 35 letters long. Um, okay, so yeah, here's something we gain in the simplicity of Racket. We have to type in some more parentheses sometimes when they weren't required in Java, but we've entirely thrown out the whole idea of needing to worry about precedents can't even come up. Okay. Um, is that worth the cost? That's a, a personal choice. Maybe like, no, it, it, it's not a problem. I've never had a problem figuring out precedence and I hate typing those extra parentheses. Yeah, that's a valid argument. Um, but understand both sides, so. Okay, uh, this is why I said, hey, when we're uh, calling a function like star, uh, I said open paren, name of the function, identifier. So sure enough, it's open paren, it's an identifier, followed by several expressions and a closed paren. Yeah, here's the closed paren, here's one of those expressions, five, and here's an entire another expression. And that's why I said that 
there are different expressions and they're not just uh, ident just not simple values, okay, like individual numbers, okay. Uh, they can be entire expressions there. So, uh, and I think I have an example over in this other file. Let's scroll down and look at that. Do, 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 do. Yeah, actually, here's a good thing. Go ahead and see if you can write this in racket. Uh, 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. By the way, the name for the square root function is squirt. So uh, I can go ahead and say something like uh, square root of 16. Da, da, da. Squirt of 16 returns 4. So, okay. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and see if you can write 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. Pause. Okay, and you come back and hopefully we got something along the lines of, well, how can we write this? There's a couple of different ways we can approach this. Um, I'm gonna go top down, okay? Top down is at the very top level, what operator is happening in this expression here? It's something divided by something, something divided by two, okay? I know how to do that, slash, something divided by two. Now let me go in the fall, uh, further refine and drill down into this, that first something. Uh, one plus the square root of five, there's a plus going on, there's a square root, of, square root going on, but really there's a, the plus needs to happen. It's, it's the plus of two things. It's not the square root of something. It's the plus of, of two things. So I'll say plus of something and something, go back, yeah. For something as well. And this was a square root of 5. Now I can go ahead and say square root of 5, and that should give me this expression here. And I can go ahead and run that, and it will give me a, an answer down here, which is the inexact number 1.618, and so on, the golden ratio. Uh, hash i, because this is an inexact number, when it takes a square root of 5, it is not keeping an infinite precision there, uh, unlike Sage or Mathematica. Okay. Um, so yeah, we're going ahead and doing this. Uh, does this sound similar to something like this? Uh, f of g of one comma h of five comma two. That's kind of what we have here. F is the division function, g is the addition function, and h would be the square root function. So yeah, but I didn't call it fgh. They they have names like plus and square root, but this is called composing functions. I take the result of calling one function, g, and feed it into f. I take the result of calling square root, feed it into plus. Take the result of plus, and feed that as one of the inputs into slash. Okay, um, and I'm just gonna point out that you've done this in Java as well, but it looked different in Java with this object-oriented putting the object first, um, which I touched on earlier. Imagine this, statement here in Java, some person dot get name dot substring zero five dot two uppercase. A perfectly reasonable thing you might write in a Java code. Um, really, what is that saying? Hey, it's call some person. Well, it's start with some person. Call get name, feeding it some person. Ah, okay. So instead of uh, get name, I'll use H. And then call substring on that, of that and zero and five. Oh, I'll call it G. So yeah, there we are. Uh, now call two uppercase on that whole thing. So you were actually uh, composing functions in Java when you wrote something like this. You were taking the result of one function and feeding it into the next in a certain way. Um, so you've seen this idea before. Uh, you can talk about composition of functions back in your pre-algebra class in eighth grade and you, you ignored it then, and now it's back to haunt you, so. Okay, um, and I'll just, uh, point out that in Java, it is, I think people will say, I, I concur, that it's maybe a little bit easier to read going left to right in that object dot syntax, okay? I start with some person, then I do get name. Then after I'm done with get name, then go left to right, I'm doing a substring, left to right, sorry. Then do the two uppercase. Whereas when I write it, uh, I'll spell it out here, of, I guess some person is a thing. Uh, yeah, it's like, okay, start with some person, 
do, do, I'm going to comment. Um, call get name. And I, I guess Racket would look like this. Um, and not just Racket. Java, if I were using static methods, would look like, just like this. Ada looks just like this. Okay, any non-object approach would look like, hey, call get name on some person, then call substring on on that. I'll do the again, put the parentheses first, zero and five, and then do a two uppercase. And when you look at this, it now looks kind of backwards because. When I read left to right, I start with the word two uppercase, which is actually the last thing that happens. So, yeah, uh, the object notation lets you read left to right in a way that is sometimes more convenient. I guess messy when you have more than one object going on simultaneously. Uh, which one do you, comes first? Yeah, then you can't do this anymore. But um, okay, but. Anyway, we can go ahead and compose functions, and that sounds fancy to say compose functions, but you've been doing it all along, and it comes very naturally. Okay, I'll see you in class. Oh, Command-Shift-2.